In this video, we're going to see how to respond to when a user selects an item from a spinner. You can see on our screen here that we have a spinner that represents all of the specimens that we have created so far on this screen. So far, it's just view only because we're just looking at them. We're not doing anything with them. But what we want to do is if we pick one, we want to populate these fields with the item that we picked. It's fairly straightforward, so let's jump right in. I'm in the fragment that represents that screen we were just looking at, and the spinner, I believe, is called SPN Specimens. And I get an option here, which is On Item Selected Listener. It's important to use On Item Selected Listener. On Item Click Listener, rather, doesn't work. So On Item Selected Listener is what you want for SPN Specimens. You have to set up kind of like an inner class to handle this. It's a little different from the other things we've done, like the button click listeners, where there's an open curly, closed curly. I wish it were that easy, but we have to do just a couple more steps here. What we have to do is define a class in line and create an object out of it. So let's say equals, and then we'll say object of what type? Colon, object of type on item selected listener, open curly and close curly. Adapter view is fine here. We could import it up above like so, or we could just have it like we have it here. That's just fine. Now you notice that this inline object has a red line, so of course we want to fix that right away. So Alt Enter, Implement Members. And it's going to give us a couple of options on nothing selected and on item selected. What we really want is on item selected. Let's go ahead and choose both. What we might do with on nothing selected, so we might just create a new specimen in that case. So I'm not going to implement the on nothing selected just yet, just the on item selected. So it puts in a whole bunch of javadoc, which you may or may not want. But nonetheless, we come down to our on item selected. This is similar to what we did for autocomplete text, where we have a position, and then we have a collection, and we have to marry the two together. Let's say parent, and then question mark, period, get item at position. So the question mark, by the way, is just indicating this is nullable. If so, get item at position will cascade back and return a null. Uh, let's pass in the position. And note that both parent and position are parameter variables that are passed into this function. So if you're wondering where they came from, that's where. Now we have to cast it, which in Kotlin we do that with the as statement, so as specimen. Now it's safe to cast in this case because I know that when I populated the specimen, I did it in this very same fragment, and I did it as observing live data. And the live data I was observing on is a collection of specimens. So I know that I put specimens in. Therefore, I'm comfortable that I can cast it as a specimen and get specimens back out. Careful with casting, though, because if you're not sure of that, it can, uh, it can lead to an error. Well, good news. At this point, I have a specimen object, so we'll say var specimen. Tell you what, even better, we'll say specimen equals parent dot get item at position as specimen. Wait, where did specimen come from? That is a variable that I have declared uh, right up here. I declared that in a previous video, and that's essentially a specimen the object that we're populating in this screen. And when we perform a save, you notice that we're going to store that specimen. So uh, this specimen is just an attribute that I've declared previously. If you didn't happen to see that video, you'll just need to declare that variable as an attribute up above like so. Nonetheless, we populate the specimen. We can now use the specimen object to populate our UI fields. Let's start with ACT. Plant name, we'll say set text specimen dot plant name. Let's keep going and say txt description dot set text and then specimen dot description. txt date planted dot set text specimen dot date planted. Let's update our view model as well because we're using our view model to pass data across screens. One other unrelated change I need to make, but I do want to make it now while I'm thinking about it, is that our view model save function that we created earlier, if we take a look at this, it's invoking document on the specimens collection without anything in it, which means every time we hit save, it's going to create a new specimen. Now, the trick is I have this in a val, which means it's final, and I also have it as a non-nullable type. But I need to actually do the assignment in an if test. So we're going to use a little Kotlin trick for this. Uh, it will take me just a moment to walk through it. We'll say if uh, specimen dot specimen ID, which is the document in the document name in Firestore, not equal null, and uh, specimen dot specimen ID is empty, and we'll negate that. So not null and not empty. So if it already exists, 
then we're going to say Firestore Collection. Uh, sorry, let me do Curly. We'll say Firestore Collection, uh, and then we'll pass in specimen dot specimen ID uh, into that document function. And what that means is let's not create new. Let's update the existing document with this ID. Now we'll just add an else part here. And for the else part, we'll just copy the line and paste it as it used to be. So the else part means we're creating new. The if part means we are updating existing. Now notice something funny. You see how I kind of left that val document equals that assignment hanging? Well, that's how things work in Kotlin. We can assign a variable to the output of an if test. So we have our if test. We are saying here's our update. We want an existing document. Uh, else, we want to create new. Whatever we get, we assign it to the document. We don't have to make that document variable nullable. And we can leave it as a val, which means it's final. I've set a few breakpoints so we can see how it works. From the spinner, let's go with purple cone flower. And we see that it hits our class that we just made. So it's going to get our specimen and it's going to update the UI fields. And then it's going to update our specimen on the view model. Since we've seen this now, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off so we can watch it in a little bit faster next time around. Sure enough, you see purple cone flower, a wonderful healthy flower. Let's choose something else. Let's choose yellow buckeye, a good Ohio plant. And you notice that once again, it populates our screen. We can keep doing this as much as we want. Spice bush, a shade loving edible. Let's go ahead and save this one. Let's say a shade loving edible shrub. Uh, one that I really like, by the way, I have some in my own yard. I hit save and let's watch carefully here. Now notice this is that uh, if test thing I did earlier. So specimen ID, what is our specimen ID? This is an existing object. So I see IPIJS. Now it should return to us this existing specimen from Firestore. And then it should save to Firestore. So uh, let's see, I'm going to pull up my Firestore, my Cloud Firestore window here so we can kind of look at a before and after. And I said this is IPIJS. And there's IPIJS. You see right now it says a shade loving edible. Now what I'll do is I'll kind of keep this uh, going over here. So we'll say F8, F8, add on success listener, add on failure listener. If it saves successfully, it will toggle the on success listener. Back to Firestore and we see a shade loving edible shrub. So you notice that has changed. I take off breakpoints so we can see it a little faster. And I simply add yellow flowers. I hit save and take a look. A shade loving edible shrub, yellow flowers. You see that updated very quickly. So in this video, we've seen how we can use our spinner and react to events and update our UI and then further update Firebase based on those events. I hope this has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.